I, I love the premise of the show. Smart people talking about dumb shit. I think it's dumb people talking about, about smart, smart shit. Oh, we go where we not supposed to go, baby. The Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Yep, Charlemagne the God. Andrew Schultz. We are the Brilliant Idiots Podcast, back for another week of brilliant idiotness. Mm-hmm. Um, Schultz, thank you. Well, first of all, how was your week? My week was good. How was yours? My week was amazing. I've had an amazing week thus far. How does it feel to have the show out? It feels good, man. You know, thank you for doing the show last week. We had a lot of technical difficulties that were out of our control. What happened? I saw you tweet about that. Yeah, it was just like, uh, it's like transfer stuff. You know, you're doing a show live to tapes and when they transfer stuff to wherever they're transferring it so it can get the air. So it kind of like had a lot of glitches in it, but you know, they, they fixed it and it's up on Paramount Plus um, for screaming. But, mm-hmm. you know, it was a great first show, man. I think people really like the, 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 the panel format. Yeah. You know? They they like seeing us all up there just talking shit. Yeah, basically. Yeah, yeah. that's all it is. That's yeah. all all of these platforms are. Yeah, it's, it's just the are. people you enjoy yeah. talking shit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Some yeah. of it's smart. Some of it's dumb. Some of it's about nothing. But guess what? It helps us all get through our days. That smart should be boring, bro. <laughs> That's my biggest issue with smart things. <laughs> it's about it's about how you do it. It's about putting the medicine in the candy. God damn, man! Like you watch Mar, right? Nah. You don't like Bill Maher? I, you know, he's fine. He's a comedian. So yeah, it's like yeah, his, yeah. his lens is... I think Rogan is smart, fun shit. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah, it's, yeah. The, it's just about the presentation. Yeah. That's yeah. all it's about. It's no, about- no. Mar, Mar has like some, some interesting space. And I think that you can do something... Okay, and I told you this before the podcast. The trickiest thing with you is going to be on your show is when guests talk, they're going to be less interesting than you. And less funny than you. And I mean that. So, and and, and I actually really like the guests. Like that girl, Liz Smith. Liz she was Smith was amazing. And Coleman's brilliant. Coleman was great, yes. So like, but at the same time, like I hear them talking and I'm like, oh, Charlemagne would be funnier saying these things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so that's yeah. going to be the tricky part is how do I get enough Charlemagne in yeah. and have some of these guests? It's just a conversation. I think it works. I mean, I, listen. Did they you know, cut that whole segment out where we were calling Liz uh, a glizzy gobbler? No, they kept that That's in. That's it? They kept that in. The only okay, thing they, kept, they, they, they just cut out the Pete Buttigieg thing. <laughs> that line was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> that was a cool line. I didn't think it was anything wrong no, with it. No, we said something with the Buttigieg and then somebody goes. We were talking about weddings. Oh, yeah. And you were saying, that I, was, I was like, well, who pays the wedding in a gay marriage? Yeah. And you said the bottom the guy bo- Obviously. And so Liz used to work for uh, secretary, Pete Buttigieg, Secretary yeah. of Transportation. Yeah. So I said, well, who paid? Why are you calling him a secretary, bro? Like that's, that's, his, that's his title, Secretary oh, of Transportation. Oh, okay. So I said, <laughs> I said <laughs> so I said, who paid that Pete's wedding? And she was yeah. like, I'm not touching that with a 10-foot ball. And I was like, <laughs> so, I know who is. <laughs> like, you know, I thought that was a cool joke. But what happened? Yeah, they thought it might come off homophobic. Why is that homophobic? I don't know. I feel like we all are just joking on each other in good-natured fun. But isn't it more homophobic to assume he can't take no dick? I thought you were about to say take a joke. Just no, no. I was just saying like, <laughs> so crazy. you know what I'm saying? Like a 10-foot pole. Where I'm saying like, yo, you can handle dangling, bro. Like, you, you know? Word is born. That's a prop. You're giving them props. Yeah, you size can. Hey, man, I feel like jokes are what bring everybody together. Yeah. If we can't joke on each facts. other, we're really not creating community. That's fact. There's things that bring community together. Food, um, tragedy. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And yeah. humor. Yes. It's Amen. like that we got to be able to laugh and joke at each other. I'm not doing anything like that's like stepping on you. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm giving you props. That's bro. it. And, yo, you can get these jokes, too. Nobody's above jokes. Nobody's above jokes. That is one thing that happens I see a lot. Like, there's certain communities, especially, like, that, like black, the black community is always okay to joke on, right? From these same people who will push back about LGBTQ community, mm. or, you know, um, other communities that I won't even say. <laughs> but, well, no, seriously, the Jewish community, the Asian community, yeah, yeah. like they'll be everybody's sensitive when it comes to jokes about them. But yeah. it's just like certain community, you can you can clown poor white people all day long. Yes. You can clown uh, black people all day long, but it's just certain communities like, ah, I don't think we should do that. I'm like, well, don't write the jokes for nobody else then. Yeah. That's how I feel. Yeah. If you're not going to give it to everybody. You got to give it to everybody. You got to give it to everybody. It's equal opportunity. Yeah, I, I agree. And I, yeah, I feel like if, the, if it's clearly a joke, you got way more uh, wiggle room. Yes. If like, it's a joke, that's good intentioned. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to joke about like your trauma. Yeah. I'm not going to joke about any, like, struggle that, you went through, yeah. your oppression. I mean, 
we we did a we did a pod yesterday with Louis C.K. and he's a wild motherfucker, bro. Louis did flagrant. Yeah, yeah. No. Yeah, look at this. Look at the opening of the podcast. I just I no. Just, <laughs> hold on. Louis just, did flagrant. Yeah, we had Louis and we had wow. Joe List on because they got a movie coming out. And, oh, I thought uh, it was already out. It's out, but they're gonna release it also for sale. This is his opening line. If you, <laughs> this guy's crazy. <laughs> I trust Days. Do you? Days is doing a great job at what it does. At I'm not saying it, it should be doing it. Like 9-11, you had to, in the sorrow and the anger and the rage and the sadness, you had to go, dude, fucking bullseye. <laughs> bullseye. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> I'm interested to listen to that interview. Yeah. But not for any of that shit. <laughs> I'm interested to listen because I would love to see what Louis thinks about you and your business model. Because Louis, it, he started. He I, I, that's started why I that, wanted yeah. him on specifically, like with this episode, because we just finished selling Infamous. I yeah. just want to give him his props because yeah. he's the reason why I was able to do this. You know, yeah, he started. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's the innovator. Wow. Yeah. All right. Well, shout out to Louis. Was it good? Did it come out? Yeah, it's out today, man. He's yeah, it's just wild, bro. He goes for it, and these are jokes. This is what we do. We like <laughs> defend the craziest thing, bro. But <laughs> you know, so he said, "Bullseye, bro." <laughs> oh my god! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ! I gotta listen to that one, man. Yeah, man. People. Oh, but oh. it feels good. It feels be- good to be back making TV. If I, I like creating content, man. Yeah, yeah. The, the 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 biggest part is like um it's it's pressure in television. Yep. The only reason it's pressure in television because television is like still so structured. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know, I come in here and it's just loose. You know what I'm saying? Breakfast Club has a structure too, but it's still looser. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um and then everything else I do is just like, you know, EP and stuff, and I just like watching people create. It's just yeah, yeah. I like I like I like doing te- I, lo- I like doing television. I actually love doing television, but it's just it's a it's a it's a it's a good um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's just it's interesting trying to figure out how to still be loose within that. Yes, and within the more like rigid structure. Yeah, yeah. And, and I, I think and, that just takes time. Yeah, and I think a lot of it has to do with the uh, fact that it's a 22 minute show on TV. Like if it's like Mar with Mar, you just got an hour. Yeah. Like, Mar got an hour, no commercial. So, Mar's yeah. literally doing a podcast. Yeah, it feels more... <laughs> you know yo, and saying, maybe man? that's why... It, maybe you need a little bit more time so you could stretch out ideas, like, say boring things. Because I felt that a little bit, too. It was just like, Schultz, we're going to you. And it was like, yeah, you got to have some hot shit right there in the moment. Yeah, it's yeah, not yeah, like yeah. this where we're like, yeah. we can figure it out, get there, and then all of a sudden we touch on some yeah. gold, and then we just mine that shit mm-hmm. for a minute. So, maybe more time helps that. And I mean, don't get me wrong, Mars got a structure too. Yeah. But it's still a structure that's relatively like you could just feel it, feel the looseness of it. Cause then even in my mind, like, you know, when you up there doing TV, you like, ah, I don't want to say I don't want to say holding back because that's not the right word, but you like, I don't want to say this shit if it's gonna get edited. But yeah. it's just like the pod, right? Yeah. Like you gotta just shoot. You gotta just flex yeah, I think your muscles. You gotta shoot. Like, yeah, there's things that we edit out the pod, but you just gotta get it out. You just let, gotta let do them it. worry about it. Cause it That's could right. also like That's right. create an environment in the room where everybody's more comfortable for these jokes. That's right. I like I feel that all the time. Like sometimes just like throw the thing out there that you know is gonna be cut. Yeah. But yeah, it sets yeah. a pressure. It loosens the room. Every, yeah, everybody yeah, yeah. unclenches their butt cheeks. They yeah. know what the ride is gonna be like. Yes. You know? So yes, thank you to everybody that tuned in um every Thursday night after the daily show, eleven thirty. A uh, hell of a week. Um, did you see Will Smith's apology? That guy's a broken man, bro. Can, 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 That's can, a broken man. I spent the last three months um, replaying and understanding the nuances and, and the complexities of what happened in, in that moment. And I'm not going to try to unpack all of that right now, but I can say to all of you, There is no part of me that thinks that was the right way to behave in that moment. I can do an imitation of it. (laughs) Do an imitation. Let me see. (laughs) I can do that easily. I have thought about this moment for some time now. It has been three months of me reflecting. Maybe my impressions aren't that good. You know what's so interesting about what you said? You used the right word, which is broken. Yeah. And it's just like, I don't think anybody, 
you don't, you don't have to allow anybody access to your trauma if you don't want to. Now, the, the reason this is necessary is yeah. because he 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 disrespected Chris publicly. Yeah. So it's cool to see this apology, you know, publicly. And cool to see it filmed at WTF. I thought that was a cool... That's what that is? No. <laughs> I didn't know. Really? I, was, I was like, man, that is WTF. <laughs> I mean, sell out. I mean, Signing with Will over comics. Sell out, Al. Will the fuck media. Listen, <laughs> here's, the th- here's the thing. I didn't need this, um, but I, 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 I guess I, I'm guess I, I'm glad he did it. I'm not. You know I, mean? I don't believe it. See, I, that's the thing, though. That, that shit is so fake, bro. Why? Celebrities can't win for losing, bro. You can't. Where's the charm? He has no charm left. There's nothing to be charming about. He's hurt. Now it's time to be charming. He was charming when aliens was attacking America. You can't be charming <laughs> right now. This guy's been charming every single time in history. It's not acting. You know, the illest thing that he said in this, the bar in this, where he said, um, I'm trying to feel remorse without being ashamed. God damn, that was a bar. Be ashamed. Does he need to be ashamed? Yes. Of? I don't think none of us are our worst moments, though. Like, should we be ashamed about the worst thing we've ever done? Yes. Really? Yeah, Break you could be ashamed. You did something bad. You're ashamed. It's fine. Shame yeah. is good. I think you can be ashamed, but don't shit on yourself. You shit know? on yourself. <laughs> <laughs> you, shit on yourself. Because you don't want to start believing you are what you did. Like, you'd be like, I'm he a piece of shit. He is that. He's not that moment, he though. Is that. No, he's not. Come on. He's not no, he's moment. not that moment. He's not that moment. He's he's the, the weak bitch that allowed that moment oh. to happen. <laughs> he's a hoe, bro. Okay. Do you know what I'm saying? You like, better have that same energy when Big Willie style roll up on you. Well, nah, what nah, is he nah, gonna nah, do? Nah, nah. What is he gonna do? Nah, 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 Listen, nah. we can get jiggy with it if you want. Well, I'm totally fine with it. You ask permission for your wife if you're allowed to come talk to me, and then we can Whoa. get just Whoa. ask permission from your Whoa. wife, bro. Whoa. It's fine. We could tussle. I'll Whoa. celebrity box Will Smith. There you Whoa. go. Ooh. Whoa. I was celebrity box okay. Will Smith. One hundred percent. Why? Why you wanna box Will Smith? Because he broke my heart. Break it down. This is my hero, man. Jesus Christ. You doing that on purpose because you know that he don't like letting people down. He broke my heart, bro. No, this is my hero growing oh, he, he, up. Yeah, there he was a... nobody cooler than Will Smith. This Will Smith saved America, bro. <laughs> Why is he still not cool now, though? Look at him, bro. He's dressed like me. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, this guy's a loser dressing like me, wearing a hat with his logo on it. You couldn't find a Nike hat or some shit, dog. It had to be your fucking logo. Yo, Jaden go fuck you up when he <laughs> yeah. see you, bro. What yeah. Jaden really Jayden gonna do? Got the karate kid, he know martial arts, bro. Hey, hey, Listen, let me tell you something. Who you rather take an L to, Jaden or Will? The Smith family about to get two L's this year. Now. Let me tell you something. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go! Come on, I'll fight. I'll fight Jaden too. I re- listen. I, I here's the thing. I don't. I didn't need the apology. Like I said, because I don't think nobody needs access to your trauma. But you know, he did what he did publicly. So he, I guess he got to apologize publicly. But yeah, it's something about this that is just like, oh. Now people are learning from it. I'm sure people are inspired by this because his 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 willingness to heal. What is in this front of people? Heal and all these big fucking therapy words. It's like, bro, you fucked up. Okay, but that, that's you're how we married learn. to a witch. Jesus Christ! He, she has sucked the soul out of your body. You have almost no humanity left. You're going through a crisis. You don't that's want probably, your wife to suck your soul out of your body. Well, that's probably why you actually did. It. <laughs> <laughs> Coming what from a married you, man, there's nothing talking? I'd like more to be honest. With you. <laughs> Suck something out. <laughs> yeah, I mean, come on now. Please. Please, God. Oh, oh, oh um, man. But yeah. So, so you have no respect for this apology None. none but I mean, he felt more remorseful about losing his relationship with Tony Rock than he did apologize to Will. <laughs> Shut up. Did you man. see what he said about Tony? He apologized to Tony, because but Tony was visibly mad. Tony went on stage and was like, I'll I don't put hands on him. He was upset. And and I think apologizing to his mother was was very powerful too, because his mother, that's her son. She felt the way. You know what I mean? Bro, he don't have zero empathy for Chris. If, if looking at his apology, it was like, I am forced to do this. By who, I though? Am, I, I don't That's know. That's what I want to know. Like, this is, here's the thing. Will don't have to apologize. Because in a lot of ways, Will clean. Like I he, would respect Will more if he didn't apologize. I would respect, honestly, I would respect Will more if he didn't fake apologize. And he was just like, yo, I'm not like y'all. I'm not a comedian. I'm from Philly. Don't talk about my wife. I let you get away with it once. You tried to do it again. That's it. And then you don't get invited to no more award shows, but at least people will go, he has a code. 
him going, I was a weak, fragile individual. I couldn't control my emotions. Here's me dressed as Tiger Woods. This is how I am. This this is pathetic, bro. What God. if he did? What if he feels like this for real? Bro? Double down, bro. What would Trump do? Do what Trump would do. <laughs> <laughs> what would Trump do? Trump would bury his wife what? on a goddamn golf course with the weakest of tombstones I've ever seen in my motherfucking Four! life. <laughs> <laughs> you don't think he want golf balls hitting her grave for divorcing him and taking money for the, for the rest of eternity? This motherfucker is the GOAT, son. That is this wild. Is I'm goat. like, I don't care what nobody said. That was not her idea. Bro. Not at all, bro. <laughs> oh, oh, she probably used mm -mm. to complain about him being on the golf course all the much. time. All right, watch this. Join me. <laughs> <laughs> the funniest shit I saw somebody say on Twitter like relax relax it's gonna look really good once they put the little windmill shit around it like cause you know how I do when you go to these golf places oh, you're like the butt 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 shit. <laughs> I was like man what the fuck but <laughs> yo, son, <I'm> <laughs> yo son if he did that that would be fire Bruh. and we respect him more Bruh. Will is doing the opposite thing he's like how can I get everybody to love me and respect me we don't respect that shit bro I don't think that's what this is I think double that, down I think Will and he said it diss I, track on, on Chris no man write a diss track I think he has a desire for everybody to love him which is very unrealistic mm -hmm. and I mean I Neither one of us, God knows, neither one of us will never know how it feels to be the good guy, the guy that people love. But you know what I'm saying? Like, Will has been the lovable guy since day. Think yeah, about that. Since yeah. day one, he's never been a heel. He's my hero. Ever. He's my hero. He let really? me down. Yo, he's my hero. He was the coolest person on the planet to me. I thought he was cool, but I mean, I always thought Will was cool. I, I like Will. I, I've, I've grown to love Will. I've always called myself a Pinkett Smith Winfrey Knowles Carter, but I've actually really grown to love Will in this phase of his life, being the Willie Lama. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, I mean? You don't like that? No, I just think that when you're the cool, charismatic guy with Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, Independence Day. Yeah. I mean, like, fucking I, Wild Wild West. Everybody hated I love Wild Wild West. Just he was the coolest, funniest, most thoughtful, charismatic, charming, handsome guy. Very hard to keep up that, though, Schultz. Yeah, of very, course. Very hard to keep up that appearance, man. You know what I'm saying? Because... And it's funny because we had a chance to rap on this week and I said the same thing to Chance. I'm like, yo, man, you you seem like you're, you're, the, the, the weight of the image you carry is starting to get to you a little bit. Because mm. there's nobody that can be that good guy all the time. You can be a good person, but we all going to have our moments. Yo. We all got shadows. Like, you know what I mean? We all deal with our shadow selves and we all know our shadow selves. There's nobody that's smiling 24-7, bro. Yo, you, that is a great point that, there's a a saying my boy Kirill has that he puts on all of his his merch, but his assholes live forever. But the cool thing about being an asshole is the expectations of you are that of an asshole. You can be sweet, but you can also be a jerk. You can actually be a human being. You can be a human in its whole totality. All these motherfuckers that's walking around smiling all the time. Oh, goody two shoes. I'm so got the perfect image. That's not real. I care about Jesus. I love Jesus. All that kind of shit. And you can do that and still feel a way. What? You can, <laughs> There's yo, nothing wrong with loving Jesus. But like if your image is tied around Christianity, yes. you're going to have the expectations right. of Christianity. As soon as it, they hear you curse one time, it's like, like, oh, my oh. God. They see you drinking some liquor. Oh, my God. And it's because we feel judgment by your perfection. If you're this perfect person and yes. you're going out and preaching perfection, yes. now all of a sudden we feel judged. We go, God yes. damn, well, I ain't perfect fuck, man. I've watched. And then you fall or stumble a little bit and we go, this motherfucker over here judging That's right. me. I've watched Will since that Rap Radar interview. I've told y'all this before. Try to shed the character of Will Smith. And he talks about it in his book. He's trying to shed that character. And I'm sure this is not what, what he wanted to appear like, I'm really human. I'm sure this is not what he wanted. This is not what he asked for. But I think sometimes, man, when you're called to serve and, and you know, your, your life serves a bigger purpose and people are inspired by you and learn from you, this is sometimes what you got to go through. Mm -hmm. It's what you got to go through. And yeah. guess what? Let's talk about the other side. I'm not mad at Chris for not accepting the apology. Fire. Just because a motherfucker tells you I'm sorry don't mean you got to be like, okay. Fire. <laughs> Sit in that. I you gotta to wear that. It. I don't gotta wear it. Word yeah. up. I, I don't even like when people say they be like, well, you know, you don't forgive people for, you know, you forgive people for yourself, not for them. But if you're not ready to forgive, 
Yeah. Or what if you've forgiven, but you still said to yourself, I'm not fucking with dude no more. And what if you have a learning disability where you don't feel anything anyway, so now it's okay. <laughs> that's right. And now you just got to sit on that. By the way, that's the other thing. Yeah. You see people, we, Chris, we, <laughs> Chris, like, I haven't even processed it yet. I haven't yet. even felt it. What? <laughs> <laughs> what? So it's just like, what? you going to sit in that oh, discomfort. You know what I mean? I think Chris felt this one, though. You think? Yeah, it was too big. You know why? Because it was too big of a stage. Ooh, 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 ooh. That also, but I also think it like disrupted, it probably also helped, but it disrupted the fact that he just, Chris takes like time to craft his standup and like That's right. years and he That's crafted right. this fucking act, That's right. painstakingly put it together. And now he's on stage and everybody wants him to talk about another thing. That's right. So it's like, I would resent, I would resent that for sure. Now there's probably way more people that are so interested to go see him and they're laughing these jokes and he's going to build up this new piece that is going to be the most anticipated piece of comedy in the last fucking decade. Yeah. But I'm sure initially it was like, man, fuck, why I got to bring this shit up? Yeah. And that's why, like, I hate, uh, I saw this week, everybody was talking about, you know, Chris Rock's comments like, after the apology, like, oh, you know, he talked about Suge Smith and he said, you know, if, if, if anybody that says uh, words hurt, never been punched in the face. I'm like, yo, he's been telling this joke all year, guys. <laughs> the yeah. only thing he had it was the Shug Smith shit. Like I, I, I saw the victimhood joke at the garden last week. Oh really? Yes, he, he's been so sad. It's a whole thing about victimhood and how everybody wants to play the victim. The only difference I'm assuming now is that he starts off using him. But no, he doesn't even start off using him. He talks about victimhood and then he goes into look at me for example, and then that's when he does the whole Shug Smith thing. And it's like literally one line. But everybody's so hungry to hear him talk about the shit, yeah, the Will yeah, Smith yeah. shit. You're taking pieces of his set and writing about him and, 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 and on the internet and writing about him in these publications. And it's like, bro, it's a part of his fucking set. Yeah. And that's why he's really smart to like bake that into an existing piece. Yeah. Because it feels as if you wrote the whole piece about it. Yeah. But you didn't. Yeah. You worked that out for months. Yeah. 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 I, I, yeah, man. I just, you know. I I I appreciate. I'm not gonna say I appreciated Will's apology because I just I didn't don't think it's necessary. I just think that he's serving a bigger purpose right now, and some people will be inspired by that. I just you know what would help him? I'm being honest with you right me. now. A Breakfast Club interview. No, 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 Char And I, listen, I defer to you with this because it's your show. You understand yeah. how the people react to it. But him actually talking to another human and being around humans, and then. What's going to happen, I assume, is the charisma that exists within Will when he's around people is going to come out. And it's going to like, it's going to go, pe people are going to go, oh, fuck, I really like this guy. Oh, this guy's, we still like, who doesn't like I don't Will? like him right now. That's not true. I don't like him right now. He's my hero. Yeah. And I don't like him. And that's hard for me. I'm the victim. <laughs> this, this hurt me I'm just saying like seeing him you guys bust balls tell stories and not on his like Willy Llama this is how you have to live life and the, the purpose of this and that shut the fuck up just like talking about vulnerable shit this was hard this but happened but you just gave shit for being vulnerable that wasn't vulnerability that was canned garbage tuna that was they tuna do? yeah that was tuna damn that was tuna right? because you don't have to do it there was no need for that. Like, yeah. Nobody asked for that. Like that's why I think it. That's why for me it was like, I, I mean, I feel like it was genuine. That's the other thing about. I believe more if he went on live. <laughs> Man, I believe up, more man. if he went on live. <laughs> Jada got a whole like cauldron in the background. She just brewing up some shit, and he's just going on live, right, and saying exactly what's happening. You wouldn't think that that'd be cool. Man, you cannot win if you're a celebrity. You damned if you do, damned if you don't. Yeah, no, people don't want to believe you. No, like do what? What celebrity do we believe? Everything seems performing. Donald Trump. No way. Come on, bro. I don't believe Trump. You don't believe him, bro? Nah, he's too good. <laughs> <laughs> no way. You ain't winging this shit, bro. Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> nah, no I'm way. fucking around. I'm fucking around. No. I don't believe it. I, I saw Marjorie it. Taylor Green quote Drake yesterday what, what, bro, on she, Twitter. What, what she said? She was like, oh, you talking teams? You talking teams? You didn't see that tweet, bro? No, fire though. Bro, pull up Marjorie Taylor. Put, put up Google Marjorie Taylor Green. And Marjorie Drake, got some bro. sisters on the team. <laughs> she, was okay. like, she was like, oh, you switching sides? And then she had a picture with Trump. You didn't see that shit, Chris? Oh, Chris saw it? I'm like, yo, these motherfuckers are crazy. Yo. I'm out of politics. I don't I don't know anything about politics. But yeah, just to put I mean, yeah, just put a button on Will, man. I just I just thought I don't I'm tired of us uh giving people access to our trauma for no reason. Mm. You know what I mean? Like if, if you're doing it because it's genuinely helping you heal, cool. But it's like, ah, oh, Lord have mercy. 
You know what I mean? It can't seem too like orchestrated. It can't seem like you're 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 saying lines and shit. That's why I think an interview with somebody, especially you, would be really now, great. Now, now, see, I agree with that. <laughs> you mean a one on one? I mean, look, I, I think a one on one could be great. I'll be honest with you. I think a one on one could be great. I think more people around would make him more comfortable. I get what you're saying. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I get what you're saying. It's like having other people that he can like tell jokes to and get feedback from and laugh and like creating an environment. I get what you're saying. I think could be really fun and I think I could show it. that fucking side of him. Like, I don't know. The pre the sad part about it is though, if he does that, then people will be like, look, he's not even serious. Look at him laughing. Good. Like, like Good. you can't win no, with no, this you win. shit. You, oh, you always win with humor. You always win with so? humor. I, in my opinion, always with humor and kind of... I'm telling you, man, you win. The, it's hard to be angry at someone who makes you laugh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Genuinely hard to be angry at a human being who makes you laugh. Who? Who? <sighs> who? I ain't seen people chuckling at Bill Cosby lately. <laughs> I ain't oh. laughed at Bill Cosby ever. <laughs> uh, huh? I never laughed at Bill Cosby. Even the Cosby show? No. Really? Come on. I, I didn't watch the Cosby show. Oh, Come on. You watched the Cosby show. I didn't watch the Cosby show. Really? I'm familiar with it, obviously, yeah, yeah, but yeah. it wasn't like a part of my life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, to your point. I was so familiar with Black Excellence by then, I didn't need to see it on TV. <laughs> <laughs> like, I was surrounded by Black Excellence. So, when I saw it on TV and I was like, oh, just a doctor? Like, what's, you know, whatever. Oh, like, oh, man. like <laughs> All my doctors have been black my whole life. Dr. Dre, the, uh, the other Dr. Dre. <laughs> Dr. J. <laughs> Dr. J. Oh, like, oh I God. only knew black doctors. This guy is so Dr. Crazy. Martin Luther King. Like, all, <laughs> all the black people I knew in my life were doctors. So, I was like, this is not, like, a unique thing. Uh, to your point, though, Bill, did, he didn't, there was no jokes during that whole time. He didn't even try. Bro, he did try to do stand-up for a moment, though. He did stand-up. There was one moment that he did joke. Remember, he's walking blind to the courtroom, and then some... <laughs> <laughs> in that moment, you're like, man, he ain't do none of that. Right? Like, <laughs> in that moment, for a second, when he made you laugh, you're like, he ain't oh, do none of that. Man, there is, some, there is something to that. There is something to keeping people distracted with humor or great music. Yo, you know what I mean? It's really make them feel. You make them feel something. Make them feel something other than what they would be feeling if all they heard about was yeah. the bullshit. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. Uh, what else we got, Taylor? Wiz Khalifa. Did you see Wiz Khalifa going off on that DJ? Yo, tell me what happened because I saw, I think it was Act Post about this. Yeah, I was told that. Also, there's uh, like a Nicki Minaj thing, like with her assistant or something. Like well, first that. of all, I can't believe anybody believed that bullshit. Oh, what was it? They, they, I, listen, first of all, this is what scares me about the internet, has been scaring me about the internet for the past seven, eight years. I told y'all this shit before. The fact that anybody can get online and say something, and if it's entertaining, motherfuckers will run with it. Nobody cares about the truth and the lies when entertaining. You know, how I, you know how I know that whole Nicki Minaj shit was a lie? Why? When she said that Nicki Minaj owed 170 plus million dollars in taxes over six years. Y'all mm. must not, not y'all don't know the IRS. IRS ain't letting you get no $170 million tax bill. That's facts. What the fuck are you talking about? They'll be repossessing everything from Nikki. Nikki be on Instagram ball headed. They'll take her wig. <laughs> I'm seriously. They would take everything from her. She would have nothing if she owed a hundred, a hundred and seventy-six million dollars in taxes. Yeah, that's crazy. I need y'all to go look at what people went to jail for in regard to taxes. It's five million, six million, seven million. They're not letting you get to know hundred and seventy-six million over six years. Are you crazy? Are you fucking dumb? What Nikki said in this video when she was like, every day I get online and I realize more and more how dumb people are. Y'all getting dumber and dumber. My mm. God. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Do you know how much $176 million in taxes is? Yeah, yeah, that much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you know how much you would have to make? Yeah, you got to make double, bro. Probably triple to owe that? Oh, to owe, meaning to you didn't owe, pay it. Oh, you didn't yeah. pay it. Yeah. And you think that she would just be out here. We ain't never heard about Nikki having no IRS problem. Since when has the IRS been quiet? Oh, I didn't know that that's what it was about. That's, I, where, that's where it started. And then after that, I didn't even want to read nothing else. I'm like, uh, oh, I'm okay. like, all of this is bullshit. Gotcha. Okay, ain't no way bad. in hell. $176 right. million in yeah, taxes? Yes, a lot. Wiz, Please. Wiz Khalifa? Yes, what I was told was that Wiz went off on the DJ. Four. Because Wiz got a new album out. Mm -hmm. And, you know, uh, he was telling the DJs to play his new music. Mind you, this is just... Hearsay for what I'm, and DJ Envy told me this. Uh, he said it on the air this morning. 
uh, Wiz was telling him to play his new music. They kept playing old shit. And then when they started playing the new shit, they were like playing the records on top of each other. And so Wiz got upset because, you know, he didn't want his music presented in that way. And, you know, what I like about this is the fact that you see like the whole DJ community rallying around these DJs saying like, Wiz, you know, if, if you would have did that to me, we'd have been fighting and all types of shit, right? Uh-huh. That's what I want to see because I want to know what DJ thinks they can beat Wiz Khalifa. Yeah, wh- yeah Wiz got hands, <laughs> Wiz feet. Wiz got hands, feet. <laughs> He's in shape. I want to see. No disrespect to the DJs, but you know, y'all not the most in shape people. Yeah. You know what I mean? I want to see. I just want to see. I want to I want to see what would happen if if Wiz did this. Plus, we talk about the benefit of the doubt, right? We don't we never seen Wiz act like this. Yeah, this so is you gotta like give so him the benefit an- of the doubt, right? Characteristic of him. Yeah, this is not you he's wouldn't so re- professional. Every time I met him, he's so professional. You wouldn't reduce him to his worst moment, right? No. Okay. Well, is it more entertaining for the podcast <laughs> listeners? <laughs> In that case, I would. <laughs> whatever, whatever keeps the good people at home <laughs> entertained. Okay. Exactly. I got you. So got let's you. do a quick calculation. And then, okay. <laughs> and okay. then carry on in that way. Do we have audio of him yelling at the DJ? That's always fun to watch. Let's in- insert that, Taylor. Play it. But to 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 uh, defend him, <laughs> every time I've interacted with him, and that's only been a couple times, he's been incredibly professional. Yeah, Wiz is a good dude. That's what I'm yeah. saying. But when I see people like Wiz or Will do things like this and we know that's not their character, you got to get them the benefit. Yeah, but don't don't compare those two. It's kind of the same thing. Is it? I mean... Is there a physical act of violence? That's my point. Like, Wiz threatened to do it. But isn't it? And it was a lot of talk. And salute the Wiz, but it was a lot of talking. Will ain't do no talking. Do we have audio? I I need to see... Are you saying that Wiz is cap? Like, he's actually not... I ain't saying he cap. I'm just saying, like, let's hear it, Taylor. Come on, Taylor. Big Taylor. Back it up, Tay. <laughs> Back it up, Tay. If you want to fight, nigga, we can do it. Y'all niggas suck. Don't hug me, bitch. Y'all niggas suck. Play my new shit, nigga. Play it. Oh, that's kind of corny, bro. Don't sun him like that. Yeah, that's corny. Oh, you knocked corny. his hat off? For y'all to have a good ass time and have a great time. But you know what I'm not going to do? I'm not going to sit here and let these whole ass niggas like this shit is acceptable. I'm a real ass nigga, dog. My album just came out today. I didn't know who was that album. Yeah, me neither. I think that's probably why he's frustrated. My album just came out today. Yeah. Play my new shit, dog. Hold on one second. I want some bad Get out the way. I don't like you, dog. I want some bad shit. That's trap song? Weird ass bitches. This is the weird ass bitches. <laughs> That's not trap song? Oh. <laughs> oh. All right, that's enough. So, we don't know what happened in him in his day. And yes, we shouldn't reduce you to your worst moment. Obviously, mm-hmm. I would imagine that he's remorseful of like treating another person like that and embarrassing them publicly. You know, he's in a position see the of power. Where's the apology? Absolutely. Go or you double WTF fucking media down. Studios, sit with the, with the fuck media. <laughs> All right. And motherfucking give us your apology. Yo, bro. We, we need that. We Are we over that. apologies? Double down, bro. I don't believe in apologizing. <laughs> it's a big issue in my marriage. <laughs> <laughs> Never? No, no. I, I actually yeah. apologize quite a lot in my marriage. But outside of that, I don't believe in apologizing for what people think you did. I only Ooh. believe in apologizing for what you believe. I'm with that. I said that on the radio this morning. I'm like, yo, I'm not clearing up shit. You know what I mean? Like, like you got to let people just believe what they want to believe, yep. think what they want to think. Yep. Um, if I unintentionally offended you, I'll apologize. You know what I mean? But it's just like, yo, people are bowing down for no reason. Like, I'm looking at this shit with Beyonce. Y'all got Beyonce changing words in her songs now? And you know what I, what I, what I just what? realized today? This is people over in the U.K., what did she say? Spaz! The same shit Lizzo said. What, what is a spaz? She said spaz, like spazzing out in a song. Like we spazzing, we spazzing. Like she used it in this proper context. And this is what bothers me about the, that spaz word. What, what's wrong with spaz? Chris, come here. I don't know. Chris said ableist. Here's the thing. 
I never knew spaz was a slur until I saw people complaining about it towards Lizzo. But here's also the thing. Spaz is a word. So it's easy to go after Beyonce. It's easy to go after Lizzo. Go after Webster's, bro. Go yeah, after that yeah. fucking dictionary. Make them fucking take the word out of the dictionary. So wait, you're saying... Go if after it, thesauruses. If, if, if a word is in the dictionary, then everybody should be able to say it? No. <laughs> what I'm saying is words matter. And I'm glad you said that because some idiot said to me, you know... Look at look at spaz like the N word. You know, if people use N word in this proper context, the proper context of the N word is racism, dummy. Whoa! <laughs> like we turned it into a slang term for endearment. What is spaz? I don't understand. Spaz. That. Well, I'm I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna yeah, ask Webster's. Let's ask Webster's. Oh, my song. What's my song? My song. Um, Uncle Joe made my dress. That huh. shit. Spaz means to spaz lose physical everything. or emotional control. He offered a post-game assessment. I spazzed out real bad. That's what spaz means. Spaz also means to move in an awkward or clumsy way. Uh, or she spazzed out and we had broken glass all over the floor. Um, spaz in the Urban Dictionary means e a, a, either a male or female who can be overdramatic, moody, weird, quirky, flamboyant, annoying, suggestive, passionate, passive-aggressive, Alex just sent one, but of course, Alex sent the term, the slang term. In American slang, the term spaz has evolved from a derogatory description of people with disabilities, which I never knew it was. Did you ever know that? No, I thought it was just a, a person acting a little uh, wacky. Listen, what we then, what we used to call people, people wacky. what, what we, other people act wacky, what we used to call what people with disabilities, they Can't also ban that word too. Yeah. And then we stopped using that word because they say that was offensive, even though that is also in the dictionary as well. Did we stop using that? <laughs> what? <laughs> Publicly. <laughs> well, what are we supposed to call retards? <laughs> Here's the thing. We never actually call people who have disabilities that. Oh, I'm not talking about them. Yeah. It would be horrible to call someone who actually was retarded, retarded. Never. That's that the whole point. That would be point. cruel. That's the point. Exactly. But if you're not retarded, and you're acting weird, that's a perfect word. Man, that's, a, that's a, you know. Hey, but we know. Same with spaz. N no, but it's spaz not the same with spaz. Bad. Spaz is generally understood as a casual word for clumsiness. Yeah. You know, sometimes associated with overexcitability. Yeah, when I spaz on the I'm mic. spaz on the mic. You know what I mean? When excites I come to these podcasts, excites of spaz startled on the response. Mic, yeah, let me hear how let she says it. it. Either way, she used it in the proper context. That I know. Uh. Ooh, Hot sauce my in my bag. Song on this Spaz. Album. Heat it. Uncle Joe, he made my dress. That spandex shit you wear is a mess. That shit hard. How does she go? How does she say? <laughs> that cheap spandex you wear is a mess. That shit hard, But what bro. was that? What? You ain't even hear Spaz. No. That's my point. I was singing this song all morning. I had no idea she said Spaz in this record until I got to the radio station. And they was like, Oh, she's changing the words fast. And I'm like, for what? No. Words matter, bro. Well, what is she going to say instead? What is what, I don't know what she's going to say. You have no idea? I have no There's, idea. You have no idea? None. There's whatsoever. absolutely no idea. That None. She's going to say Rihanna. <laughs> 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 That's what she's going to say. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All I'm simply saying is, if you use a word in its proper context, how can it be offensive? Well, well, well now. Uh, uh. Yo, that Beyonce slap. makes music, bro. bro. If you like Drake album, you're going to love this shit. Oh, it's that crazy? It's a dance album. It's like, and I like the, I, listen, y'all know I don't even like Drake's music like No, that. but that last, I spazzed out on that last one, bro. I spazzed, no, honestly, you know, I thought he spazzed on that song, Sticky, bro. Bro. I was spazzing, dude. Word. I Word almost up. had an or spasm, dude. I was, <laughs> I was listening to that shit. <laughs> dude, can you have an or spasm? Or a or spasm. Is that allowed? Wow. Is that a real a thing? Or spasm. <laughs> <laughs> is that allowed or not? A or spasm is wild. But I just think that words matter. And if you use a word in this proper context, it should not be considered offensive. Yeah. And we all got to be smarter. Bro. Are there self-identifying like spaz people? Like, did they, do they call themselves, is there I've a spaz never heard community? in my life. 
Huh? No, right? I don't think so. So that's then, like, my what point. Are you fucking. And we're doing this because the people in the UK, because people in the UK are complaining about Beyonce and Lizzo's music. Okay, so me. I need some Americans from the LGBT community to go over there and tell them to change the name of their goddamn Ooh. cigarettes. Ooh. That shit sound more offensive. That's than that's fact. Somebody saying I'm spazzing on a record. <laughs> he said facts. That's it. Okay, just like that. Oh my god, let's pay some bills. Hot sauce man. in my bag. Spaz. spaz. <laughs> yeah, that's what you got to say Hot, hot now sauce on. in my bag, spaz. spaz is wild. Real talk. I'm spazzing By the way, out. don't you wish Beyonce would have doubled down? Not doubled down, but just simply like, can we have a real conversation? Yeah, can Beyonce say, don't need to talk to y'all. She She's changing even, the lyric. She don't even need to talk to y'all. Like, just put out the song. You know you're going to dance with regards. The fact that that lyric is more offensive than half the shit we hear in music anyway yeah. is crazy. Why don't y'all take down the songs with the fucking Rolling Stones singing about banging 15-year-olds? How about you do that? That's right. How about y'all do right. that? Change That's up right. some of them lyrics. That's right. Over there, you That's weirdos right. in That's the right. UK. That's right. You and goddamn weirdos. Context matters. And by the way, I will respect y'all. I will respect everybody that's leading this movement. I will respect y'all when y'all go after the dictionary. Yo. Go after Westies. Can I be honest with you right now, bro? I'm going to go handle this in the UK, bro. What do you mean? I'm going to do something about this. Yeah. What do you want to do? I'm going to go out there and I'm going to go handle this for Beyonce. You're not going to disrespect Beyonce like that without me coming out there. And spazzing on you motherfuckers, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not joking, you gonna spaz on some, If you're going to spaz for somebody, spaz for Beyonce, yo. I'm spazzing for Beyonce. I'm not I'm not playing around, bro. I see. You I'm so serious. You look like the Spazmanian devil right now, bro. <laughs> you ready to go. <laughs> you ready to go, bro. You are ready to let it go. I I'm telling you. you, Charlotte, I'm not playing around right now. I'm going to UK to Spaz, okay? Oh, man. I didn't even know it was Nyla because she was wearing a dress. Oh, Lord. Nyla don't even know she's Nyla when she's wearing a dress. <laughs> Big NYLA. Hey, hey. <laughs> you know no, this not. already. <laughs> how, how do you feel about spazzing on people? I don't think she has to change the word. I don't think. Thank you. To, but I don't think you got to go spaz on people. Beyonce, no, I'm going to the UK to spaz on these blokes. By the way, she, do what you got to do. You could do that. You a white man. Oh, do it. shit. Facts. Oh, shit. Facts, bro. <laughs> Which, about time way, you recognize my race. <laughs> 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 Hey. Why are you showing off the sneakers? Oh, that's fire. Who got them for you? You need uh, to get them Britney Griner, them Russia, Alex. Russia prison issued Britney Griners. But I don't think she, do you got, she don't got a shoe. They do. They, or it's a slipper, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this guy is so stupid. Oh, man. Yeah. What do you think about the proposed Britney trade, bro? Um, that was a f huh? What? Okay, we'll do ads and oh, come I'm back. Sorry. All right. Uh, salute to Audible. Uh, Audible, man. You know that uh, myself and Kevin Hart, we got SBH Productions, and last week we put out the audio documentary that explores two unprecedented events that rocked this Philadelphia in the summer of '85, and that's the name of the project. Uh, created by New York Times best-selling author Chris Moreau and narrated by Philly native Kevin Hart. Chris is outside. Chris don't even look right on TV sets. Did you see Chris on goddamn Good Morning America talking about summer of '85? Bro? Yeah, dude. He looks super imposing. Yeah. <laughs> he looks like, like. Did you see him? No, nah, I saw him post a picture of it. It didn't look real. No, nah, it didn't look real, bro. <laughs> It didn't look real. It was weird, right? Yo, why was it so weird? I don't know. It looked like he was on Zoom, but he was there. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Big Zoom energy, Big bro. Zoom energy. B-Z-E. Big Zoom energy. You got that B-Z-E, Chris. Big Zoom energy. But Summer 85 digs deep into what happened uh, when the city's first black mayor, Mayor Wilson Good, dropped a bomb literally on the headquarters of a radical group called Move. And two months later, Spazzed on him, bro. Uh, hosted Live Aid. He did. He, no, he really did. He spazzed on them. An international concert uh, Live Aid was to raise funds for African famine victims. Move was a controversial Philadelphia-based organization led by John Africa that promoted a back-to-nature lifestyle and anti-government rhetoric. Live Aid was a first-of-its-kind benefit concert that brought in millions of dollars for famine victims in Ethiopia and changed how the world raised and distributed money. Okay, separated by two months and eight miles, 
These events reveal the best and worst of the city of brotherly love through a combustible mix of power, philanthropy, and prejudice. Okay, featuring interviews with people who directly experienced the events like Bob Geldof, uh, G- Geldof? Bob Geldof, uh, Daryl DMC McDaniels, Mike, Mike Africa Jr., and the queen, who I love dearly, Miss Patty LaBelle. Okay, you can hear it exclusively Ooh. on Audible. Listen now at audible.com slash summer85. That's audible.com slash summer85. How's the reception been, Chris? Fantastic. Really? Like, fulfilling for you as a creator? Come on the mic, Chris. Can you talk? Come on, come twerk that thing one time, Chris. People like when you came and bent over the... Uh, <laughs> but take the mask all the way off, please. please. Jesus. Also, I know Christ. why I look weird on the TV set. Why? I didn't realize... Some guy came over. Well, beside that, <laughs> but like this outfit fire though. You like that? Hell yeah! Yeah. Ooh. Chris outside, bro. <laughs> was like, Chris outside, doing it, bro. Chris just hit us with the Cosby. He was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, saw him? you saw him, bro. You saw him? Nah, this shit fire, dude. Like, I like this. But but why you you thought you look weird? So when I sat down, some guy came and whispered something in my ear and pointed to a little piece of red tape, like under the desk. And I realized what he meant afterwards was put your hands there. Oh. But I didn't know. So I had my hands under the desk the entire oh, time. Oh, so you look like a puppet. You were, No, you were beating me. Is that what it was? I might have forgotten. But the guy, you know, he was using his hands when he talked. Mm-hmm. But I, the entire time I just had my hands. Oh. Uh. So, so you say the reception has been good. How do you, how do you gauge that? Uh, you know, the articles have been good. I had, uh, I don't think you were there, but I had like an incredible talk with Kevin at that, uh, photo shoot the other mm-hmm. day where he Kevin was, Hart. Yeah. Kevin Hart. Oh, Hart. Okay. Hart, Hart. Yeah. 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 And he was like, listen, I do, this is what I do for a living. I create content. I tell stories. I know when there's a story that really has been mm-hmm. like researched and told the right way. And this is one of them. And I'm just like really proud of how this came out. So I was like, all right, you know, like, that meant something. Yeah. That was that was kind of a moment. And just also, like, I think the other gauge is just kind of getting the reaction uh, from people from Philadelphia, since they know the story probably more than most people. And, uh, you know, I think the most important thing is people fe- feel like it's fair and, and balanced, to use, mm. a, to use a phrase. Mm. So uh, it's been fantastic. And salute to Zola, too, man. Uh, Zola, sure. Zola Mashariki. You know, Zola... Basically, she's 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 the big boss at Audible. She's the head Ooh. of <clears throat> Audible Studios, and she actually posted on her personal Facebook page, which she doesn't do a lot. Yeah, right? I saw that. Yeah. She'd be doing it all day long because think about all the projects that they put out through Audible, and she really, 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 really loves Summer '85. You know what I mean? And mm. she was like, "Man, just the correlation between Live Aid and you know uh, what ha- the bombing of the Move organization that was something that a lot of people never put two and two together on." And she really, 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 really dug the project. So that was big. I was like, damn, like Zola posted about that on her yeah, that personal was Facebook page. That was amazing. You know? So that's big. She's literally the head of Audible Studios. You know what I mean? So salute to Zola. Everybody go get Summer 85 on uh, Audible right now. You want to do... You want- Guys, this summer is full of official events like weddings, graduations, annual 4th of July barbecues, but everybody knows the best parts of summer are the unofficial ones. This summer, Coors Light is the official beer of everything unofficial, celebrating those moments that truly make summer chill. The first day of summer is officially June 21st. Unofficially? It's whenever it's warm enough to enjoy a beer on a patio. The weekend is officially Saturday and Sunday, but unofficially, it's Friday afternoon, too. Summer is officially the warmest time of the year. Unofficially, it's the chillest. I'm telling you, summer is the best, especially if you're if you're cracking open one of those ice-cold Coors Lights. You know it's cold because those mountains are blue. It is the best beer in the motherfucking business to sit back, relax, and chill with. There's only one beer out there that's literally made to chill, and that's Coors Light. The mountains on the bottles and cans even turn blue when your beer is cold. That way you always know it's time to chill. When you need to reset, just open a Coors Light. It's mountain cold refreshment made to chill. Coors Light is cold, legendary, cold filtered, and cold packed. It's basically made to chill. So, guys... This summer chill starts with Coors Light. Make the most of your summer with a chance to win exclusive chill merch, fun local experiences, even a trip to New York, Chicago, or Los Angeles. Enter to win at CoorsLight.com slash idiots. Okay? 
CoorsLight.com slash idiots. Remember, there's no purchase necessary. Sweepstakes end the 15th of August. Okay, the game ends the 6th of September. 50 USDC, 21 and over only. Void where prohibited. For rules, visit CoorsLightSummer.com. Celebrate responsibly. Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. Now let's get back to the show. So, church announcements. What do we got, Schultz? Yo, I just want to say thank y'all so much for for buying Infamous, supporting me. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was amazing. Those two weeks are absolutely incredible. Everything, you know, I'm 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 really most proud of. Uh, well, I'm most proud it was successful for sure. But the and the reception of it, but but also that we made like a comedy pay per view event at a time where, you know comedy specials go up on a streaming platform and they're either ignored or forgotten about. And like, not only do we have a comedy pay-per-view event where everybody's watching the thing at the same time, tweeting about it and like creating a conversation, that conversation lasted for two weeks. So for two weeks, people talked about a comedy piece and that just doesn't happen right now. Like we held attention. So I'm just so fucking proud of that. Thank you so much for everybody who supported it. It means the means the world to me and I'm just, I'm really grateful right now. So now it's going to become like a, uh, like almost like a, a, like a like a legendary thing that either you saw or you didn't see, and if yeah. you have it, you actually got like something rare. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean. Yeah, yeah. I yeah, mean, yeah. I don't want to call it an NFT because they ain't worth shit. But it's like, <laughs> a, it's, you know what I mean? It's actually 100%. more it's more authentic than an NFT because it's actually There's a, a real piece, a real yeah. body of art. So that's amazing. Uh, I want to tell everybody go get their tickets for the Black Effect Podcast Festival. Yes, um, Black Effect dot com slash podcast festival is happening Sunday, August 28th at the Mirage in Brooklyn. We got some of your favorite podcasts performing live, 85 South Show, uh, Horrible Decisions, uh, Reasonably Shady. And it's uh, hosted now by the good sister, Just Hilarious, because, you know, our guy, Little Duval, he had a really bad accident that, you know, <laughs> he is bouncing back from and only... In, in the only in the way that Duval could, yeah, Duval is not letting him hold it down. Like he is, Beyonce made you can't break my soul for people like Little Duval. I almost feel like he's excited that it happened so he could prove he's really about that smile bitch life. Bro, let me tell you something. Yeah. Duval Facetime me the day it happened. Yeah, and we joke so much. It took me at least five six minutes to realize. Oh, he not playing. Yeah. I thought he was on the set of a movie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm not even joking. I, he was laying on the stretcher. He had the the, the the neck band around his neck, and he was sitting there. He was like, "Bro, I fucked up, bro. I fucked up. I fucked up." What happened exactly? He got hit by. He got a, hit by a. Uh, 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 he was on his four wheel and got hit by a car. He's on his four wheel and he's turning into his house. There's a car behind him that tried to get around uh, the four wheeler. Went the way that he was turning in. So it was just. People. Horrible timing. Yeah. You never know, and then boom. Yeah, so he, I think he, he he fucked up his hip. I think he got like a fucked up wrist. He might have to have surgery on his yeah, wrist. Yeah, he had his hip replaced. Ooh. He has to do surgery on the the wrist. And I think his knee also something fucked up. I'm not lacerations sure. all over. But I thought like, he was playing. I, I he, he's on the phone. And he's like, yo, he's like, man, I fucked up. I fucked up. I fucked up. And I'm like. You want me to call Trey? You want me to Trey the truth? Like, I don't know. I'm, I'm joking, right? I'm just saying. And he, he just starts saying all kinds of things. Like, I'm going I'm to be doing smile, bitch, from a wheelchair, man. I'm going to be doing smile. I'm like, what are you talking about? Right? Like, because I had no idea he was, like, actually yeah. hurt. And then when I could see, because I saw the blood and then I saw the doctors, I'm like, oh, shit. But, you know, Duval ain't letting this shit keep him down, man. You know, and, and that he is a testament to, like, Yo, you got to have joy and faith in God through it all. Mm. Like life is just one long process. That's why I don't even believe in good or bad. It's just so-called good, so-called bad. It's just all a process. Mm. He's just going through a process right now. So uh, salute our guy Duval. He won't be hosting, but uh, Jess Hilarious will be hosting. And uh, make sure you go get your tickets for the Black Effect Podcast Festival Sunday, August 28th. We got Mouse Jones there doing trap karaoke. We're going to have food. We're going to have drinks. We got a business and podcasting panel. We got a woman in podcasting panel. It's going to be some really, really fun shit, man. Um, And make sure you tune into Hell of a Week every Thursday at 11.30 p.m. on Comedy Central. Uh, This week we got, you know, I don't want to say who we got coming on because, I, you know, anything could happen. We got a great show for you this week. Oh. Yes, yes. So uh, let's get back into the show. What else we got, Taylor Gang? Man, let pastors make money, bro. Like, I don't know why we still even have that conversation. Why can't pastors and bishops make money? You ain't mad at your local drug dealer for all the money he make. 
That's why you mad at your local pastor. Okay, you ain't mad at rappers. You ain't mad at singers. Like, how did the thing he provides a service? Rappers really ain't making the money they say they do. That's right. I don't know what Nala just said. Nala, what did you just say? I said rappers don't really make as much money as people think they got. So that's why we're not really mad at them. Well, people don't know that. But I, pastors provide a service. What, why what, can't they get paid for providing a service? But, uh, what do you mean? What do they provide? They, well, get, they, they provide faith every Sunday. No, no, they there's still there, positive yeah. energy and empowerment in the people. Like they make you feel like you can get through life. They, yeah. and, and by the way, these people have dedicated their life to speaking uh, the message of the Lord. Why can't they get paid for that? Now, why real, can't they get paid for that? Real quick, they they can get paid. Anyone could be a bishop. You know that, right? Why you, you could not be one? one? You could be one. Everything. You, why else. you not one? I don't want to be one. I don't. And I, and I don't believe everybody can be a bishop. You just go online. Nobody in this room can preach like Bishop T.D. Jakes. That man is anointed. Of course. But someone like, what's his name? What's his real name? I've never heard him preach. He might be fire. You saw I've never heard him preach. I don't know. I've never heard him preach. Why are you acting like you don't? Isn't that a preacher thing, though? You can be an anointed rapper. You can be an anointed preacher. Okay, what about this? It is true that pastors should be able to make an income. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, but if you are following the gospel, the gospel says that you shouldn't have all these luxuries. Where right? did you say that at? It literally <laughs> says it. Yeah. No, wait, 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 show me. I see, I see the Bible tell you that no, you No, it's like you should live humbly. You should, uh. You can, you can be humble in a phantom. You ain't got to tell nobody you got it. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you ain't got to show it off. I mean, he, he had a, he had a thing where he was pulling up in the fucking Urus and shit. No, he yeah. said, this is my prayer closet. <laughs> That's what he said. All right, but specifically Am about Am I making this. this up? He said, this is my prayer closet. But he wasn't showing it all. He wasn't like, this is my Gucci, this is my Louis. He said, this is my prayer closet. He just happened to have the Gucci and Louis in there. Y'all got jealous because y'all don't got a closet full of Gucci and Louis. But if you gave your life to the Lord, you might have some, Taylor gang. You ever thought about that? You, me- you thought about maybe you're missing your calling by being a producer? Maybe you should be a pastor because Psalm 112.3 says, wealth and riches are in his house and his righteousness endures forever. Philippians, I'm about to say Philipp- Filipinos, Filipinos 4.19 says, and my God will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Like, the Bible don't say nothing about being broke. I don't know where y'all got that from. The Bible talks about wealth and riches so much throughout it. We didn't say that it's spoke. It never says you shouldn't be broke. It says you shouldn't be bragging about it. That's all money. it says. But no, that's all we said. We didn't say anything about being broke. I haven't seen and a man then, brag yet. And then also, sure, anybody can find a Bible verse to be in favor of what they believe. The same way you just pulled those, I could pull two saying the exact opposite. Pull it, pull them then. I don't feel like it. Yeah, I hate when motherfuckers do that. Pocket. Don't say I'm you can do something if you can't I'm do it. I'm, I'm getting, pull it. I'm getting for you right now. Pull it up. Who you text the call in? Huh? You text the car? <laughs> 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 pull it up. All I'm simply saying is be humble. That's all we want. If the guy wasn't stunting, you wouldn't care. You know how many pastors make money throughout the country and they deserve it. But that's you know who okay. else? You know who else should make money? Teachers. How come y'all don't tithe an offer for teachers? You know who else should be making money? Police officers and firefighters. How come y'all don't tithe an offer for them? Y'all don't respect y'all public servants. That's the problem with y'all generation. But y'all will give y'all these. Don't re- y'all don't either. You learn from y'all. Y'all don't either. What have y'all? you done for teachers? When I didn't have millions of dollars, I still did what I could. When's the last time you've donated to a, a person that g- does service? Seriously, now I'm not I, joking. I, I haven't donated financially, but I'll donate my time and knowledge. How? Tell me how. Because that matters like, too. How? No, I've done Spin Like a Girl where I taught kids how to DJ. De- well, young girls how to DJ. That's not donating the public. I'm talking about the t- people that are actually doing this service now. I'm talking about our nurses, our doctors, our right, teachers, our police nothing, officers. Look, right now. Military I'm a, veterans. I'm a, oh, oh, I, I give money to vets on the street all the time. Okay. My dad's, you know. That's good. Tired 27 years. That's so good. Here's the problem that nobody, here's the thing that nobody wants to admit. Jealousy and envy is a motherfucker. And it don't matter who it is that has, everybody gets jealous and envious. Envious yeah, of that's, people. Yeah, that's why you have to be you careful do. what you show. Like, yes. you go to certain parts yes. of the world. Like, when I was in Morocco, like, you couldn't see wealth on the outside of the building. Right. All the wealth is on the inside. The houses were, I think it's called like a Riyadh or whatever. Behind like that. the walls. Exactly, behind yeah. the walls. Because they knew, it's like, yo, there's yes. poor people on starving on the streets and you gonna flex in front of these people like that's that? Right. That's crazy. That's right. Like, that's so right. I do understand, like, Adam Sandler's still dressing like a, a toddler. 
Because he's probably scared to flex. <laughs> nah, because he knows that it, he won't be relatable yeah. to the people that watch his movies if That's he's right. out here acting his wage. And that happens to everybody. Yes. All of these people that folks like, as soon as they start looking successful, like, but I don't fuck with him like I, I used to. I, I, I don't fuck you, with her like I used to. Can I tell you something? I don't know if you felt this, but when you don't have money, you love flexing. No, I've never been like that. When, At least for me. When you don't have money, you love flexing because you're like, you want to show what you don't have. The second you get some real money, the urge to flex isn't there because the ego is satisfied. It's like, oh, you actually have the money. Now I don't have to showcase all these people on Instagram how rich I am because you know you are. That's an interesting thought. When you're broke, you got to be like, yo, look how crazy my life is. You're trying to dress it into existence. Almost. Yes, you're right. faking it till you make it, and then you make right. it. You don't got to fake it. It's like, I when I couldn't afford private jets, we were flying around a fucking tour on them. Do you know what I'm saying? Now that I might be able to afford it, I'm like, I would never waste money on a private jet. Fuck a private I don't, jet. I don't, I don't, I, I, you know what's so interesting? I don't think the ego is fueled by uh, what you have. I think when you have, and you're satisfied with that, and you don't care about showcasing it to anybody, that just shows how secure you are with yourself. Because exactly. you're not seeking yeah. validation to others. 100%. I think a lot of times people want people to know, I got this and I got that because they're really seeking validation from other people. They, 100%. Yeah. And I think there's something about like maybe reaching like a success level for yourself that makes you go, okay, well, I don't care as much how these people feel about it. It's, it's a cool moment to get to. But I do admire, like if you look at the really rich people. Yeah. I'm not talking about regular rich. I'm talking about wealth. You don't even, like, when you see them, you don't even know it. They're not you wearing know it. it. They ain't got nothing on. They might have a watch that you don't even know about that's worth some crazy amount of money, but you have no even clue. That's that right. There's no diamonds encrusted all over it. My dad told me that when I was mad young. He was like, you see that dude right there? Mm. That dude is rich as shit. Like, be, the, be a regular white dude, regular yeah. black dude. Just you, no, no Gucci on, no Rolex, no nothing. And I, I always had that mentality. Like, oh, when you got it, you know what I'm saying? You don't have to flaunt it. Yeah. It's when you don't really have it is when you, people then you want to flaunt they the want to fake it till they make it, which I think is uh actually ridiculous. It, yeah, we're ridiculous. Human beings are ridiculous. Yeah. Everything about ourselves is absolutely ridiculous. We want love, we criticize. We yeah. want if we want to be told we're great, yeah. we just shit on people around us when we really just want them to be like, "Hey, you're really awesome." And we're you know, weird. You know what's crazy? And listen, there's plenty of pastors who use God, you know what I mean, to 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 come up and make money off mm -hmm. it. But it's funny when we'll look at a man or a woman who's dedicated their life to God, right? Yeah. Dedicated their life to service, dedicated yeah. their life to actually, you know, doing something that benefits people. And we'll say they don't, de they, they, they don't deserve that. You know who actually don't deserve all the money? Us. The fuck do we do? Mm. <laughs> like, like, oh, you like mean they, like they, us? Think about how crazy <laughs> America is. Right, right, America yeah. is a place that rewards people that do shit like we do, yeah, but then teachers are out here athletes. starving. What are you doing? Right now? What are you doing right now? Athletes. 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 Oh, yeah. Athletes. 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 What? What are you doing what am I right confused now? About? Man? Go be a pastor then. Like, what, 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 this is, what, this what are we confused about? Teachers should be making, you, teacher, you, teachers should be making mad money. Teachers, teachers Yes. But think about that. America does not reward them. Military veterans should not be homeless in this country. But America does not reward them. But motherfuckers like us, who talk shit for a living can make millions of dollars. Yeah. I, I'm not knocking it because I'm one. You but I'm just yourself. I'm just simply saying that there's that, there's something weird about that. You don't understand what I'm saying, Chris? Yeah, I, I agree with Hold you. On, I just sorry, don't... sorry. Yeah. Jeremiah 923. Talk to me. Thus says the Lord, let not the wise man boast in his wisdom, let not the why uh, let not the mighty man boast in his might, let not the rich man boast in his riches. James 4, 16, 17. But now you boast and brag and all and all such boasting is evil. It is a sin when someone knows the right thing to do and then doesn't do it. Psalm 59, 12 to 13. Because of the sins from their mouths and the words of their lips, let them be trapped in their own arrogance because they speak curses and lies. Destroy them in your rage. Destroy them until not one of them is left. Then they will know that God rules Jacob to the ends of the earth. It proves your point. It talks about uh, just don't boast. Yeah, have it. Nobody said don't have yeah. it. Just don't be boast. Don't right? boast, don't That's brag. I, yeah. I think with this guy specifically, though, I understand what you're saying in general. He's probably not the best example because he has been accused of stealing money from the people in his church. He's been to jail for identity fraud in the past. He can't change theft. his life? 
He went to jail and came home. He can't change his life. No, nah, so, so Malcolm X is a fraud. Don't do that. Malcolm X is a fraud. This Malcolm X is a fraud. He's Malcolm X. Video of that him bishop is Malcolm X. out whoever and. Biggie oh, okay, Big. Okay, let me ask you a question. What? Biggie Big. Do you believe in Kirk Franklin? Like Matter of fact, do you believe in Kirk Franklin? Do uh -huh. I believe in him? Yeah. You believe in Kirk Franklin? Kirk, Kirk, do you believe what? Kirk Franklin is a righteous man? I believe he's a human. You believe he's a I'm righteous not, But I'm do you believe he's a righteous like man? Like no, nah, I'm just asking. Do you believe? Because we saw him curse out his son crazy. That don't make me look at of him course, any different. But that's two different things from what he just did. How was it two different things? You just told me that he said he cursed somebody out. I saw a video of Kirk cursing somebody out too. I think that's a bad example. That I don't is. know what y'all talking about. I think that y'all hating that's on this man. <laughs> and I don't even, I, I've never heard the man preach. I don't know nothing about him other than what we've seen in the past two weeks. But this man is not boasted. That man, y'all, you know what it is? They hating on that man closet. You hating on that Women man's closet. Women love closets, bro. Yeah, you jealous. Women love you jealous. fucking closets. You jealous you, of that closet space. Y'all hating on that man closet. Y'all yeah. can't believe that pastor got a bigger closet than y'all yep. with more clothes, yep. more yep. outfits to choose from. Y'all yep. hating on that man's closet. Give your closet. life to God, yo. This is horrible, yo. Spaz out for God. Spaz out for God. <laughs> if y'all spaz for God just one time, y'all can get a closet get like a that, closet too. just like Have that, Have you ever yo. thought about that? Jealous. Man, give me this man's website. I'm about to donate to this man's yeah, church right now. now. Y'all y'all got me wanting me to donate to this man's church, yo. Come on, man. Come on. Matthew 6-1. Give me some asking idiots so we can get out of here, Taylor. <laughs> y'all done hated on that man of God for no reason. <laughs> okay? You don't know nothing about that yeah, you're man. You're so good at arguing a second argument within an argument. All I did was argue with your point. What the argument was. Yes. What was the argument? That pastors shouldn't oh, get you money? Always, no, you do it in normal conversation. So what was the argument? You're just hard. I really don't know what the argument was. What was the argument? I'd be like, yo, the sky's blue. He'd be like, but water, water makes grass Here's the grow. thing. Here's the <laughs> thing. Like they didn't have an argument. But water oh, makes grass grow. Like, what right, was the so argument? The main thing was. This is what about... women do. When they lose an argument, they'd be like, it's just because you're too good at arguing. <laughs> <laughs> it's because you're right. It's just because you're right. You yeah. only want to argue because you're we, right. We still can't be right. We just good at arguing <laughs> what's wrong. That's them saying we still wrong, That's but we just better at arguing the, the wrong thing. The main thing was really about today, Schultz. <laughs> <laughs> the main thing was about is it a certain type of is it okay for uh, the bishop to get money how he is? Why not? I mean, oh no, no, showing off. How he he didn't show and, off, and though. And you kind of answered it already, though. But he never showed off. He did not go in his closet and say, look at all this stuff I got. There's a video of him pulling up in an orange Lamborghini. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a but he didn't say, this is my orange Lamborghini. It's He's driving a car. He say it. No, no, no. He like did it as part it? of like a promo thing. He was driving his car. Charlotte, on camera. Out. On camera. He was driving his car. <laughs> what are you talking about? The same you, okay, you, you showed off your sneakers, you sinful bastard. <laughs> you came in here, Nyla, and showed off your sneakers. God does not like people boasting, okay? I didn't see the pastor say, look at my Lamborghini. You came in here and said, I want to show my sneakers. You put your sneakers up on the table, boasting crazy. Crazy I boasting. really like my sneakers. Wow. He likes his Lambo. And he didn't even tell and he didn't even tell you he had a Lambo. Yeah. I didn't hear him not once say he, he had a Lambo. Himself, bro, bro. We need him on the pod, yo. <laughs> when he's out of people are giving him offerings and everything else, right? We would think he's using that for something else, not all this designer stuff. That's what makes it uncomfortable. Yes. Why, man? You know what a good Come been on. a good example is uh the Black Lives Matter movement and how every time she buys a home. Twitter gets in an uproar because it's like, well, what are we donating for if you living in mansions? Speaking about two things that don't go together. Here's the thing, man. Jesus had lambs. Bishop Whitehead got lamb boots. <laughs> All right? Yeah. I don't know what the hell y'all talking about. <laughs> All right? I don't get it. I don't see the problem here. Give me some masking idiots, Taylor, and let's get up out of here. And here hating on pastors for no reason. And, and, and hating on the Black Lives Matter, Matter movement. Why are you guys hating on don't that? Don't tell them nothing. When they get pregnant, they're going to want a pastor to pray for them because they're going to need it. Yup. <laughs> yup. <laughs> yup. That's what's going to happen. Right. Right. Come on. <laughs> for real, you got to chill out, man. Uh, Taco Slayer says, what is your definition of love? <laughs> to me, it's sacrifice. What is your definition of love, Schultz? Yup. Yeah, sacrifice for sure. You think so? I think there's sacrifice in it. Uh, what is my definition of love? Love, 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 love. Yeah, I think it's like just like selflessness. You know, it's like, uh, that's a great question. What is what is my definition of love? Hmm. 
I don't know. Love is an interesting thing. It's like, it's this feeling that you have where you want to do things for another person. You want that person to be happy and their happiness is so integral to your own happiness. And like, you just want to give them the world. You want to provide for them. You want to support them. Yeah, it's just this feeling where like, I don't know, your your behavior towards this other person is like instinctually the same as your behavior for like yourself and your family. Mm. And I think, yeah, that's when I know that I really Not love even somebody. even your family. Sometimes it's stronger than what you have for your family. Yeah. Well, because, yeah, yeah, you're making your new one. Yeah. My, but, um, yeah. I had a homegirl back in the day. She told me that uh, uh, you don't know what love is until you have kids. Mm. When you have kids, if you love your significant other the way you love your kids, then you that's love. Oh, that's cool. And I feel that. I really do. I really, really do feel that. I, I don't. I, I mean, honestly, I couldn't give you what a definition of love is. I just, yeah, it's tricky. It's just something you feel, but I do know you can't feel it for others if you don't genuinely feel it for yourself. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, I think that's why, like. Uh, I think that's why you see love in music and you see love in art so much because oftentimes we go to art and we go to music to describe feelings that we have that we can't actually articulate. So like Ooh. a song makes you go, oh my God, yeah, that that song makes me feel the things that... That's what I was going to say. Like the emotion in music to me is almost more powerful than yeah. the relationships I have between people. Yeah, that, that's, I don't know. That I think Ethan mm. Hawke said this somewhere, but I think that's the idea of like art is like art's, not necessary until you can't describe how sad you are or until you can't describe how happy you are, how in love you are, how excited you are. And then there's a piece of art, there's a piece of music that you either look at or like you that's consume right. and you're like, or there's a movie you watch and you're like, oh, that's the feeling that I have. They, they figured it out and they put it in a place where I can relate to and digest it. That, that is the important thing. can say what I can't say. Yeah. Right. And the power of spoken word is so powerful, bro. Right. Whether it's music, whether it's comedy, whether it's, radio podcast whether it's pastors yeah po like the power of spoken yeah. word is literally what moves us all yeah. like everything yeah like even when you're looking for that right quote or that right you know it's there thing to say in a moment like it's somebody that has said it that captures it 100 percent. man uh what else we got taylor gang uh not really eh, let me see what else we got <laughs> now, this is a good one. Methy D. Menace says, what's something that didn't make sense to you? You can end on this one. What's something that didn't make sense to you as a kid that makes even less sense now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I got a million of these, I feel like. Um, why, why women and men sound different? Like dog, male dogs and, and female dogs <laughs> just great... sound the same, right? Like, so like to you. I, oh, like to you think dogs oh, will be able to distinguish yes. the barks. Yeah. You know that for a fact? I do not. So your dogs can can hear a, like a growl from a girl dog and be like, oh, that's a girl growling. I think so. But we don't know that. Animals have made it called. Yeah, I get you clearly know it's from the other. Speaking of animals, yeah. for me, man, it, it, it's like when I was a kid, I used to wonder, like, how do all of these shit have the same name? Like, if this was a room full of cows, you mean to tell me every single one of these individuals is a cow? Like, none of them have their <laughs> own individual. Like, you're Andrew. We're all humans, right? <laughs> but you're still Andrew. I'm Lennar. This yeah, is yeah. Chris. You but know they, I mean? don't they name cows? They name cattle sometimes. They really don't. They don't care enough to name them. This is uh, all cows. Yeah. You well, I mean? if you were going to eat something eventually, would you like name it and um, anthropomorphize it? No, it? but that's the thing, right? When I was a kid, I used to be like, damn. And who came up with those names? Like who said, this is a cow, this is a cat. And they tell us right. the story of Noah and how Noah named them. And the reason it makes less sense to me now is because Peter stands on that shit. Yeah. Peter be like, yo, don't say bullhorn or don't say somebody's chicken. Like they say, don't use words. Yeah, don't call somebody a pig. Yeah. And this and that. You, you didn't even ask the animals if that's what they want to be called. Ooh. So it makes less sense to me now as an adult. Also, uh, when your parents used to, like when school used to be back in, or about to be back in, they'd be like, practice going to sleep early <laughs> for school. And you're like, what? Yeah, what yeah, 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 yeah. They was just trying to get it popping. <laughs> that's bro. it. Yeah, bro. yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of shit that don't make sense to me. I mean, that didn't make sense to me then and don't make sense to me now. What do I tell my kids what? When you want them to go to bed early. Go to Mike Taylor. Boom. Boom. 
What? 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 We had like two cases of pink eye in my house between my seven-year-old and my three-year-old. And they were acting so difficult with the drops, bro. So what'd you say? I started. You're going to go blind. (laughs) I went from blind to your eyes going to fall out because they were not listening, bro. And the funny part about seven-year-olds and three-year-olds, they know better. They my know. eyes ain't falling out. Yeah, yeah, now they you know. know what I mean? And then my wife wouldn't back me up on it. like, her, their eyes are not going to fall out. I'm like, you, yeah, you know yeah, what I'm yeah. saying? <laughs> well, you fight them then. I'm not holding them down to put drops in their damn eye. You know what I mean? But yeah, that was, whatever the fuck Taylor asked me, that was the answer. That's all we got? We good? I think we good, baby. I think we good, man. Uh, as always, if you listen to this podcast, you think we're smart, you think we're intelligent, you think we're brilliant, you're absolutely right. But, if you listen to this podcast and you think we're just a couple idiots who don't know shit, you're right, too. It's the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Thank you for listening.